Well, I've been here minutes, I haven't even got the uh, feed really going in. I've got a piece of bread flake out and I've got a nice, pretty nice bream on straight away. Check this one out, let's get him on the mat. I mean, like minutes people, minutes. I put the bobbin on, it's just gone straight up. It's ridiculous. And I missed one before that, I haven't even got my float rod together. That's link ledger in, a piece of bread flake on the bottom, single swan trot. I'm just using a piece of bread here. Just using a piece of bread on the line as a bobbin. And I've got a quiver tip rod and I'm fishing just in close, just right in here. And I've baited up slightly farther out with a couple of handfuls of pellets. And that was almost pretty well straight away. Let's see if I can get the float rod together. Forgot the tripod as well. Because, I mean, there's another bream I think hooked up here and I can't get two rods on the go, it's just impossible, bread flake. And we'll see if we get this one out, I'm just set, setting the float up, put a piece of bread on. Yeah, it's another bream. Um, on one bread flake, I'll run through stuff in a minute, but I think we're going to have to go to head cam, it's very, very windy. So I've got the uh, brolly up behind me here hoping that um, I'll get a bit of sound for you people but it will be windy so we'll see where we go from here but I've had three fish already and I'm, I'm barely set up so um, let's move along and see if we can't get the head cam on you can see what's going on I'm going to have to shoot with the head cam inside the umbrella if I put it on my head I'm going to get wind but I am here the sound's going to be a bit peculiar I've got a float rod on this which I'm going to work for a while and I've got a link ledger on um, quiver tip rod. I've just come for an afternoon's fishing, just plain old afternoon's fishing. I might have to just pull those nettles down because they're sort of blocking my vision. We're going to have a bobbin down here on the uh, quiver tip rod and uh, bright indicated little buzzer and just watching the float. And as I say, I've had already three bream. So fingers crossed I can concentrate. I might have to drop to one rod, which is almost multipliable offence for me. But um, if they really do come on, uh, it's going to be busy. So I'm going to stay on the head cam if I can. Well, <laughs> I'm getting peeled out by something here. I'm way out in the lake over there, there's got to be a carp. I've got the camera in my mouth. I'm trying to get some worms. And it's uh, very dry for digging worms. No way this is a bream, it's got to be a carp. And he's way out there. Oh, he's certainly going. Oh dear me. This, if I get it, is on the antenna float. It was only just a last minute thought to pop over here for an afternoon's fishing, so I'm hoping it might be a wise choice. Come off, he just pinged off. Just came off the hook, guys. It's not a problem. So, all I'm using here is I'm going to keep an eye on that float there. There it goes. 
even float fishing here, I've got the reel on back wine as well. I've got simple link ledger. I'll show you like that, you can see it. I can move the shot up here closer or down there. This way it gives a good bit of movement around. Um, and then all I do is stop it down here like this with a little number one shot, about a foot or so away from that. Um, size 12, barbless hook and a piece of bread. And the bobbin I've got is just this piece of plastic there which I'm trying to actually leave on the rod. Let's see how close I'm fishing. That's right, it's just there. There's a fish jumping out there. I'm just literally dropping this down there. As you can see here, just resting the bobbin there. Tighten up the bobbin. Just like that. So Bobby's just down there in the grass. I don't think it's going to last long for it, no shooting up. And I'm watching the float at the same time, but I might just go for double, double bobbins. It's sort of easier to either do two floats or two bobbins. But I've caught on both at the present time. And I think with bread, you've got to be careful with small fish knocking it, like the float over there. It, it doesn't actually knock the bread off and you're sitting there with nothing. So the wind's a bit annoying to say the least. Now the bread is on there. Now I've got some pellets as well I've been meaning to try, but if I'm catching on bread, why would I why would I change? A piece of bread flake, I just fold it over there once, push the hook through, and I just pinch it around the eye of the hook. Do you can see that? I like to keep that point clear. And this um, number one shot will just take it down. Then just hopefully rest it on the bottom. And sometimes you'll get fish actually taking that on the drop, the float going down slower. Quite an idyllic day. Late spring, early summer, gonna call it early summer this. Pleasure to be out, except for the wind. Oh, I missed that one. And I've got a snag instead, piece of weed. So again, slice of bread, look, it's just here. How easy is this? Slice of bread, pinch a piece off, put a fold in it. Watch that float. One pinch around the eye. There's the float going. Oh my God, you watch the float shoot under as I get this out there. There's almost an underhand cast. And I just use my fingers up here just to pull that. There's a fish here already. Just trying to leave this, see if we do get a take. If you look, I think the bobbins probably more than likely go first. Got some of those expander pellets. Which are, oh, I'm on and off. It doesn't really seem to matter at the moment. I'm using, I wouldn't say small pellets of bread, but it doesn't seem to matter on the size. Well, I might have lost a carp, but the bream have uh, maintained their presence. Who would have thought just a loaf of bread would catch all these fish? And they're not like small, small bream. What are we call average ones? A nice looking fish here in that setting. They're still as slimy as ever though. Well if it ticks away like this it won't be too bad will it? Worth coming for the afternoon.
camera in one hand, missing bites in the other. But this, I feel, is a carp. The wind is unbelievable. It's had the brolly away twice and buckled all there. So what you'll get of this, I do not know, but the fish pretty well are going crackers. This is some different line I've got here. Wow, well, he's going. Yeah, this is called Gamma, this line. Just trying it out. I used Maxima Chameleon for 40 years. So we'll find out what this stuff's like. It will break once and I will go back to Maxima Chameleon. I've used it for 40 years. But the guy says this is really the dog's business, this, this line apparently. So anybody who wants to test it, go and have a look at the cells. It's called Gamma. It's nice and fine, nice and supple. It's in a moss green, the one I've got. And it does seem pretty good. Yeah, this is a carp. Be nice to get a carp. I've had a, honestly, I must have had 12, 15 bream now. Here he comes. And he's in. Not the world's greatest mouth. He won't win kiss of the week. So there he is, almost, almost a leather. It's just got a little bit of saddleback scales there. So a nice carp, I don't know, six, seven pounds maybe. Oh, That looks awfully like a hybrid, guys. Got that one down. It looks like a roach. I think the fin is a little bit farther back. What do you guys think? Do you guys think that's a roach? It's not a rud by the mouth, but it might might be a hybrid. I don't know what you get out of this because it's so windy. But uh, I must have had 20 bream at least. I missed another one, it's just crackers. Um, I'm gonna put some more bait in, get through the boat. I've got about an hour and a half, two hours left. And I've had two, three, one, two, three or four more carp left. One was a good one, but I was talking to a guy and it was a nice common about seven, I guess. But I'm gonna have a soak up of that bread again, as I told you before. Well, I've been uh, flicking a few bits of crust out there and I've seen quite a nice fish come up. In fact, it caught me on, on the hop a bit. I wasn't even uh, thinking of carp off the top of being dead, but maybe later in the afternoon they might actually come up. So, it's all moved around again, the wind, so I've got it rigged up on top of my carp barrow, the camera's on top of that, but on top of a jacket, because I forgot the tripod. And what I've been using is a mix. They're going bonkers now, so I need a break, to be honest. I've got those expander pellets, and I've got some of these things right here. For years, they're just called a 2.3 mil sinking perret. Perret? It's a perret. That's how that carp talked like that, because he had a funny mouth. <laughs> he had a parrot mouth. <laughs> oh dear, still got a sense of humour assembly. 2.3 millimetres, ideal for carp breathing. Jesus. Tench. Ideal for cupping, catapulting, 
or PVA bags, low oil. So I've tipped some of those sinking pellets in with that. Mixed them all up, because they sink anyway, but I've just put them in much of the ground. But look, guys, they're eating everything. They're eating everything out there. And then just a piece of bread on the hook. I mean, I'm bouncing between link ledger bread, float fishing bread. I haven't changed. I've got a banded pellet I could use. I'm not even going to... I don't think I'm going to bother. I mean, it's just crackers. I mean, I've had... Do you know, I think I lost one rod. And talking to Nick, he said those breeds go to about seven pounds in there. That's a nice size breed. Between five and seven would be a big one. Obviously going to hit the carp here, I don't know what else is in there. And uh, he had a stock rotation here as well and had a bit of a thinning out session. And um, there's some real good fish in here now because I don't think I caught bream that well before when I've been here. Um, a lot of rudd, I think he's got rid of a lot of the tiny rudd as well. So it's, you know, it makes no difference when you watch this, whenever. Always ask and check because obviously fisheries do rotate between lakes and stocks and do stock checks with fish and stuff like that just to make sure everything's all okay. And it's always worth knowing because if they don't say a netting, you get to know which lakes I've got. If you want a big carp, the biggest carp in it. Right, we're gonna have another bit of a sandwich and a, and a drink and then we're gonna get back on the case. Beautiful day, but it is howling. I nearly lost the rod then, people, on the float. Big piece of chunky flake, I think, got uh, the carp on the And there we go before I drop him in my sandwich box. <laughs> not to eat, no, not to eat, just by accident. That's a nice carp, that one. Nice mirror. Get it back, and I'll show you how I got them on the feed with some sort of leftover rubbish bait. Obviously, I'm using a regular ground bait mix here. But I'm also working my way through the bread. And what you get, if you're really piling fish, you're going to get the bits you want to use, the centre of the bread for hook bait, right? And if they're not taking off the surface, which it appears they're not taking off the surface, well for me anyway at the moment, because the wind's blowing so hard it's pushing them up under the bushes. I keep that soft bit for my hook bait, and then you're going to get left over with all these. So all you've got to do is if you want to use these and get them sinking for the ground bait, right? You can, you can even peel yours in advance, peel the edges off the crust like this, take the crust all off, You've got your hook bait in the middle. You get these bits and pieces, not the grass. Man. Just get your landing net, chuck them in the landing net like that, and just put them in the water to soak. Just an old school method to save uh, getting out here, out the wind. It's clouding over now, so hopefully the wind might might die down. We're on a demarcation low line at the moment that the west of, say, Somerset is getting loads of rain, probably the wind as well. This side, the east of, say, Wiltshire, it, um, it runs up there and goes in a big line up to the Midlands, and that's pretty dry at the moment. That's what I've got, but my golly, it's windy. Now, when I'm talking, that's soaking. As I say, I've got this for my hook bait. Just keep that under my chair. Put my ground bait under my chair, because I feel I'm going to get more fish now. I could put the last of those pellets in there. And although they're sinking, I like to mix them all up in there. Like that. Don't forget all those bream, they're noshing their way through that bait big time. You're hardly going to overfeed them. Especially if there's a big shoulder. Bread's been in there, those bits are crust for five minutes. I take it out. See this, it's all dripping there. I just shorten up the mesh here and then squeeze it. Can you see like a sponge, it's all coming out? Now that little squeeze out, and then you can either make a paste bait from that, or take it out the net like this, and just run your thumb through it, breaking it all down. Don't throw it in as it, as it is at the moment. Mush it all up like this, 
I'll tell you what, this sends carp crackers. If they're in the swim, trust me, you start doing this, they go completely bonkers. You better hang on to your rod as well, because I nearly lost mine when I was on back one as well. Mush it all up like this, and then throw in a pellet about that big. So not quite a golf ball, nice and loose. Don't squeeze it too hard. Let it go all sloppy, and then follow up with sinking bread flake, either float fishing it just off the bottom or on the bottom, and it shouldn't be long before they start snuffling their way and getting their noses into this stuff. It's just like a fishy, well, they're a sort of pig, aren't they, really? Let's face it, the old carp. The way they're nuzzling on this stuff. See that in the light there? We'll come back with a scale on the hook. I don't know if it's a bream or what a carp, but there's fish in the swim. Common this time, common carp. And so as soon as I got that bread and started sinking, they're on the bite big time. Still going on the bream, guys. Nice fish, and basically, I can barely keep up with them. And there's one, two, three guys over there fly fishing. This guy in the corners, he had some this afternoon. They've all gone quiet now. I think he might have one now. They're on dog biscuits. But they're what we call off the wind. You know, they're... Um... Where the hell did that go? Oh, in the stingers. Oh, it has to be, has to be, yeah. Has to be. Yeah, so I'm hoping for either one big bream or one big carp. That generally means they're going to miss the bite. And because I've got a big piece of flake, I've gone for a longer drop on the bob in there, so I let him take it right up this time. Back up here, I've had a couple of churners. What a good job I had the reel on backward. I've got to watch those two don't clash. Just to keep them apart like that. Float's been a little bit slow. But the actual uh, bobbing with the ledge has been good. Biggest bream of the day, guy. Or, or it'd be bream of the night, but right, look, the hook's falling out. Yeah, this one's a nice one. Get that secret bait out of the way. Whoa. Here we go. Good sized fish. Probably gonna give me a slap in the face in a minute. 
pleased with that though. Let's get it back in. Man, I must have had 30 of them. I'd say I've had 100 pounds. Or 100 pounds if you're terribly polite. More of this. Slop. You can see how far a loaf of bread can take you. <laughs> Unbelievable. Rain's coming guys, so it's only going to be rain stop play. Because if I get underneath there, I won't be able to fish underneath the body. Oh, it can't come out on the top there on floating crust, but they're not really going on the top. For some reason, they're not really going crackers. It's still there now. I'm getting bites on the, on the uh, lake bed on the bottom, so why change? Over here is black clout. Get a bit. Oh. Bobbing just there, guys. Oh no, I'm gonna get wet. <coughs> oh, on camera, people. Right on camera. Little company along. Meow. So many bream, it's like I'm fishing in Ireland. Finally, at long last, if you can see the lake here, the wind has actually gone down. It's still got lovely, and this is the sort of time you want to go floater fishing on the top. But I feel there's still fish to be caught on the bottom of the lake. Quite a few people packed up. The guys fly fishing are still over there, flailing away. But they'll like these conditions as well, because this is when you've, I've done loads of fly fishing stuff here. And this is the conditions you want, no wind. And they are starting to move with sort of late afternoon, early evening. My wrist is aching, not for holding a camera, just fighting the fish. Goodness me, I've had some today, or well, this afternoon. Ground bait's looking a bit sad, but that's the way it is. I've got a load of pellets, I'm not gonna use those anymore, it's just bread they want. And I'm getting through the bread here. 50, 60p, a loaf. Unbelievable action. Nice big one guys. And there we go. Getting close to finishing time. He thinks so as well, let's get him back. A nice big fat common. Result. Well I chucked some bread down there and the corner one was coming up definitely. Right in the margins. It's stilled off lovely. A couple of the fly fishermen have gone. And a couple of others have turned up. So, cheerio for me. Cheerio for my newfound friend, the cat. We'll see you in the next episode if I ever get packed up. And um, hopefully as many fish as I catch in this one. It's been a blinder. It's been really good afternoon's fishing. 
but I know I'm going to get soaked if I do sit around. And I've got enough for a film event, God knows. 6.8 carp, 30 bream. That one that would look like a roach bream <laughs> hybrid. Sorry. We'll see you in the next one, guys. Wow, that was a great bit of fishing and caught on both the float and the ledger. Now then, a few films back, you know I had a slight problem with moles and trying to get rid of them. But I was driving around and what did I stumble across? Yes, the ultimate mole removing device. Yes, here we are, I'm driving along and what do I stumble across? Oh my goodness, this is just what I need for either crushing the moles Look at the size of this. Is it some form of Bren gun carrier? And there, that giant cog. I had a look around. It must be the spare driving cog at the front. Maybe they have one on each side that they can, um, you know, fix to the tracks. I guess they don't put their ammo in there because obviously it's on the outside might get hit. But look here. What is this? Is it some sort of multiple rocket launcher there? That pointed in the right direction or stuffed down a molehill could do the job. But there it is. The ultimate mole removal device. It looks like a SAM setup. Am I right? You military personnel out there, tell me is this a surface to air missile mole destroying thing? It looks like those missiles are gonna fly a very long way and they have a sharp, nasty pointy thing on the end there. What boy wouldn't want to play with that? Never mind boys, I wanna play with it. In the middle is I assume the GPS tracking locator, and there is something worth having a go at the moles. Military personnel out there, tell us, have you ever used any of this sort of equipment? And more important, what's it called? Oh yes, those moles have better look out now. I'm coming for them, mind you. I checked on Amazon, I can't find them on there. Finally guys, shout out to, probably thinks I won't mention this, don't, don't all pile in for shout outs, because I'm not doing them, this is a one off. To Mark Bridges, Mark, I did read your comment, yes, I'll give you a shout out from Gloucestershire. He was a garden designer. He's a big fan of the show and he used to match fish in his spare time. Spare time? Does anybody know where I can get some of that stuff? Anyway, good luck Mark to you and thanks for watching. People, we'll see you in the next show. Fingers crossed. Some more information, a few fish and a bit of random stuff as well. See you again.